Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and what I'm currently playing for you is a Minecraft mod that is designed to allow people to fly around in airships they build. Now, the mod video I'm showing you has nothing to do with the hackers, other than the unfortunate incident which happened, which is the Discord for this mod was taken over and was trojanized by a hacker. Now this hacker then was able to distribute a file that we're going to take a look at in a minute, which infected players, claiming it was an alpha release of what you're about to watch. Now looking at this, I can see why someone would want this. And especially if you're in the right Discord, you can understand how this could happen. One of these people was reached out to, either with a similar message about a game beat test, and then when the hackers figured out they were in a Discord they could severely take advantage of, they decided to create a bogus announcement claiming that this was the download for the mod. Uh, from what I've been told, there were 800 downloads before the file was taken down, which is a lot, and this was a successful malware campaign. So now let's take a look at what really happens if you run this supposed alpha version. Okay, so after we download the file, we get this zip, and then we extract it, and we get this beta game tester folder, which contains the actual files. Now let's uh, turn on Procmon before we run this, so that we can get an idea of what it's going to do. Now let's run this. So far, uh, nothing... Oh, oh, we get a UAC prompt. And it's going to... Okay. Now we briefly had something pop up, but it's gone. See if it's running in the... Oh! Well, here's something I have never seen in my entire history. History of testing ogenized fake games, but it's actually very clever. There is actually a game. It's not just fake. We got some sort of intro. Now, of course, this is obviously not a 3D game because this VM has absolutely no graphics acceleration. So the fact this is working... Trolly, okay. So this is, as far as I can tell, this is an Electron app. And I'm going to guess this game is probably stolen from somewhere, because I don't think the hackers are in the game dev business. But this would be way more convincing, because rather than just having, uh, like many memes have described, a command prompt window that blinks for a second and you kind of, well, you're, you're either kind of freaking out and you're pretending to ignore it or you go along with it, uh, here we've got a game, and whatever payload is running in the background has already stolen all of our information. Now it's going to run really slow should load. And we can see Microsoft console-based scripting environment. Oh. Error. Relaunch API. I don't, I don't like that. We can go on over to Process Explorer and we can get an idea of what this script, what script was executed and what it might be doing. Oh. Oh, there was just a PowerShell that just got spawned. We need to escalate this so we can actually see the seal. Okay, lots of things are happening in the background. Get clipboard. Okay, so this is some sort of really janky PowerShell clipper. Then we've got the actual game. And from that, it's also spawned these. And here is the VB script that we can find in our app data, not in our temp. So there's a bit of a change there. Now, I'm going to imagine that a lot of the command and control for this, now that it's been exposed, probably not up. Any oh, okay, so there's actually... This script is actually just a fake error message. It's not any sort of payload. That's just, I guess, to give an explanation for why this game doesn't quite look right. So we got a clipper in the background. And if we go and see what this thing has spawned from this tool, uh, we can learn a bit more about what's going on here. Now, knowing how this operates by spawning a bunch of child processes, the best way is to get the parent PID and put that in. Knowing that is 4420. Now add this, and we will now see every process created by the parent process. So, uh, we get a CMD create. And here we can see some of the anti-analysis. So, this is simply getting the directory that this is run out of. So here we can see all of these PowerShell get clipboards. Okay, here are hits to the registry. 
Now we're querying the uninstall information, so this is going to be checking if a program is installed. Now given this stealer is able to inject Discord, it could be related to that, so let's go up and see what else. It's checking for quite a few programs. Then here we start, this is where we start the fake game. And here is a common new anti-analysis trick. And I'm not sure if it worked this time because it may just be looking for specific names. But what they have started doing is using WMIC to get the video controller. And there are a couple trade-offs they gotta make. Because if they block the Microsoft basic video controller, they run the risk of losing legitimate victims. But for gaming malware, it's very unlikely that someone who's actually playing games doesn't have graphics drivers installed. So that's a new trick. These are all some other anti-analysis tricks. Now, luckily, given how stealth this VM is, most of those are not going to show, unless they happen to have our Iwakura Enterprises SSD on the blacklist, which I don't think they do. See, we got a real, we got real SSDs. Uh, they, they can't blacklist that. UUID detection is usually more aimed at sandboxes than end users, and then they can do some other tricks to try and, uh... yep, and it gets the name Microsoft Basic Display Adapter. Now, luckily for us, that doesn't seem to be on the deny list, so we were able to just go ahead, and everything ran as usual. Now, let's just go back to looking at our questionable game. Maybe we should actually, yeah, I think we'll just kill it, because it's clearly, uh, it's a bit much for this system. So now, after we've installed Mauer, and especially because this campaign has been going around recently, let's just try and figure out, is this a persistent campaign or not? Because that is the main thing. When people ask, what do I do if I've fallen for this? Well, one of the best things you can do is get sys internals auto runs and try and figure out how persistent the malware is. Because if it's not persistent, the only thing you need to do is every single password, credit code, anything like that stored on your computer needs to be changed if you've run an info stealer. Any account that is logged in has to be signed out. Every single password has to be changed. Every single credit card that was saved near Google Chrome has to be cancelled. Those are the main things. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we've got multiple fake setups. Windows driver setup. And we've got beta game tester. Now these, are these both the same file? Well, we can, we can find that out pretty easily. So we can actually go. So it's actually just a fake name for the auto run. And they're both in the same directory. So... What we may be able to do is just delete this, but let's try unchecking these and rebooting to see if it comes back. Because there are a couple of ways of achieving persistence, and if they've done it in a sophisticated manner, my advice is just going to be to reinstall Windows unless you're extremely confident in what you're doing. If they haven't, you can delete the files. Another tip, if it's difficult to delete the files within Windows, get a Linux bootable drive, boot it, from a USB, and delete all of the malware files that way. Then there is no way of the process being running and re-adding itself. But my advice is still, unless you got critical data on the system, it's not worth the risk to continue using an operating system that's had a persistent stealer installed. That's really weird. The task manager is... Okay, so those re registry tweaks also disabled the task manager. Now... Of course, we have system internals installed, but if it does things like that, my advice is just going to be reinstall Windows. Yes, you can fix it, but it, it's clearly it's gotten in pretty deep. But let's see. Process Explorer still works, hopefully. There's no obvious indication that it's running, so I think we have, we've succeeded getting that. It's showing an, okay, so disabling it in order runs didn't seem to get rid of it. Always a really bad sign, in my opinion. The main way that they will do that is the process will still be running and it will see when you're shutting down, it will recreate the hook, put it back in when it's shutting down. So uh, to stop uh, attempts at persistence. Now something else we can check is uh, whether Defender uh, will catch it. Oh, that's interesting. It did initially catch the launch of it, but let's try running a quick scan, and also let's check if we have any weird exceptions in Defender. Exclusions. None. Okay, that's good, because that's that's one of the easiest tricks in the book. Oh, it looks like somehow these got added. I allowed the first, the Wackatat, because that was the first detection it got, but I don't know how these got on the allowed list. Maybe just because... So let's run this again with those taken off of the... Okay list. 
and see if Defender catches it. No threats found. Okay, now let's see what a Sandbox has to say. So we get a couple of Yera rule hits for Wasp Stealer, Stealer, Evasion. Uh, none of these are good. And in the span of 60 seconds, uh, we, we've uh, got a bunch of things. So yeah, we got all of these different commands. It just calls a bunch of these. Uh, gets information about the operating system's architecture. Runs the WMIC process. This actually might be an attempt at info stealing your product key if you have act if you have w Windows activated. It checks a bunch of different software that you might have installed. The actual payload is an Electron app, and then it just uses TMD to do all of the malicious activity, which is a popular choice. It also calls IP info to check uh, if you're running this on a hosted server. Then we call, now this is probably legitimate. This is not, I don't think, is a part of the campaign. And then we hit some dead S3s. Now let's take a look at this website. Okay, so Trolley Delicious Dark Escape is actually a free web game. So it doesn't even contain the game in the binary. It actually opens it in the Electron app to distract the user. So this is essentially a cyber distraction burglary. And unfortunately, in this case, it seems like it was very effective. So that's going to be all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do uh, leave a comment, like, and subscribe if you enjoyed it. That's all from me for now. Bye.